Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board. Today is Monday, believe it or not, the 1st of March. It's a little blustery out there. I want to strap things down. <clears throat> um, we've got a, a somewhat lighter agenda tonight. <clears throat> we've got our minutes. Uh, we've got some appointment of public wares, and then we've got our um, updates for um, some budget discussions and our COVID update, which I think will be a little better than last week. And our um, and then we've got some updates on uh, the vaccination site and our select board and town administrator updates. So when we get things rolling with our minutes from February 22nd. Motion. All right, we have a second. A second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. all right. <clears throat> and next up we have an appointment, uh, a slate of appointments for Delta Sand and Gravel Public Wares. And we're we're just we're we've got other personal information on there, so we're not displaying the names on the screen. But do we have a motion for the um, slate as presented? Motion for the slate as presented for public wares. All right. Do we have a? I'll, I'll second. All right. All those in favor of the uh, slate? Aye. 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 All right. <clears throat> I don't know if um I didn't know didn't see Lori on yet. I don't know if she's on now for our COVID update. Um. And if not, we can we can talk uh, about some other stuff, Jeff. I know we have three cases, right? Yeah, Lori's here. Is she? Okay, hey, I, can't, I couldn't. Hey, Hi. Sorry Hi. about that, Lori. That's okay. <laughs> I have to scroll down to see. There you are. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, the update was was real good this week. Um, we have three active cases in town, and I think she said two of those are going to come off of active real soon oh good um so we'll just have one and and i think she said that one actually went to his parents house to self-isolate okay. and they so, were all umass related right i think weren't they they were all umass related yeah. yes okay yeah so that's going to bring our two-week number down to around seven i believe oh great well, we're so. headed in the right direction finally so yeah. I'll say. <laughs> I mean, that, that's you know, like they say, you got to stay vigilant and keep up the all the precautions because and get people vaccinated. Definitely. Everybody's trying. I know that. So. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's hard to get an appointment. <laughs> yeah. No. <clears throat> yep. Oh, that's good. But right. I think with the new Johnson and Johnson vaccine coming out next week, that'll yes. make it a lot easier. Yeah, that'll get a lot more in, and I think that one has got much. Uh, easier storage uh, requirements and then just one vaccine, right? I think just one, one, yes, one dose. Yeah, and I thought I heard that it's pretty effective against the variants so far, anyway, too. So that's yes, good. Yes, so far. Keep yep. our fingers crossed. Definitely. Yeah. Can I ask a question, Mr. Chair? Yeah. So, with the rollout of the vaccination uh, locations, are we losing any testing sites locally? Uh, that's a good question. Nationally, it's become an issue. I'm just curious because they I roll believe over. UMass is still testing, but they're yeah. testing. I think they went to symptomatic testing instead of asymptomatic testing. Okay. No, we're still hmm. doing. Uh, they're still doing both. Yeah. Okay. Good. Is well, that what? I got my thing scheduled for tomorrow morning. So. Okay. Right, thank you for the clarification. <clears throat> is that at the Mullen Center, Tom? Still or? Mount Monster, Davey, yep. Okay, all right, just so folks know too, because. <clears throat> well, to, if, 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 some, if anyone's interested to, to get a COVID test at UMass, you just make an appointment. Make an appointment, yeah. Online, and uh, you just walk in, and it's, it's, I would recommend either, I would recommend early, the first thing in the morning, that seems to be the best time to go. Yeah, that's true, get it out of the way early. <clears throat> well, the. After, after 10 o'clock, the students wake up, so. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then they all start going down. <clears throat> yeah. oh. All right, any other updates on your end, Lori? No. No, okay, all right, good. Good update. Nice short one this good week. Good week, CMD. I know. That's right. We like it, we like it a lot. <laughs> all right, we'll keep, keep, uh, keep on heading in that direction, hopefully. Yes. On the COVID subject, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Uh, have the Board of Health uh, reached out to its businesses that may have been affected by the 
original hold on ex expanding their services? That was two weeks ago. I thought I saw something out there in email. Wasn't there something, Jeff, that um, they were reaching out? Yes, uh, they did. They did reach out. Um, there was a letter that went out, I think, last week, um, notifying the affected businesses of, of the rescission of the order. Okay. All right. Good. Excellent. <clears throat> I just want to put that out for the public consumption. Yeah. No, that, that's good. Just so folks know, we reached out to them. <clears throat> Luckily, we have a small enough list that it's not uh, it's not a tortuous thing to reach out, which is good. <clears throat> good point. All right. Thanks, Laurie. Anytime for this right. kind of update. <laughs> I know, right? That's the kind of update we like to give. Yes. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, thanks. How about um, on your end, Jeff? Any uh, new COVID update related things this week for you? Uh, the only thing was, I think Lori was spot on with what her, her figure was last week for the last week's report, state report, and we're in the green um, again. So that, that was the only thing I wanted to add if, if people were okay. keeping track. Yep, Gr green is good. There we go. <clears throat> and I know, uh, Tom, you're doing some work with the vaccination site over the weekend and everything. Oh, yes, baby. Yeah, yeah appreciate that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, how'd, that, how'd that go? Uh, we, we, uh, we were very fortunate uh, that the uh, new ownership of Treehouse Brewing um, opened up the, the old Channing B facility for uh, uh, us to ho hold South County with FERCOC to hold a uh, um, vaccination clinic. Um, I would say, I think we had like 491 over the two days, 491 vaccinations. Um, we uh, utilized, there was at least 20 volunteers from Sunderland. Uh, I can't tell you that that was an amazing turnout by our volunteers in Sunderland. Uh, it was, it was great. Uh, mo most, most worked uh, a half uh, a three or four hour shift. Um, so it wasn't uh, a lengthy stay. Uh, so it, it was fantastic. Uh, and as I said before, and I hope there's 19 other people now feel the same way. When you go to a clinic like that, you hear uh, um, people laughing, smiling through their through their uh, face mask. And if people don't know, you can actually see a smile through a face mask. It's there it's amazing. Um, it worked out. It worked out really well. Um, I it was it was funny. Um, there was uh, one gentleman that that was there and he was uh, a little nervous about uh, getting shots because he didn't like shots. And I'll oh, tell yeah. you, these nurses, these nurses, they, they, they are amazing the way they give shots. And I was getting some information from the gentleman as, and as he was talking, the nurse gave him the shot and we kept uh, talking and, and uh, I, I finished and the nurse said, well, how was that? And he said, what do you mean? I said, he said, well, you already had the shot. I gave you the shot already, and he was uh, <laughs> never man. I didn't want was nervous about getting a shot. Didn't even realize he had a shot. So uh, I, it, it was amazing. Uh, uh, and again, uh, people have volunteers. I think one of the things that we heard was I haven't been around this this many people in a year, and it feels right. really great. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I, I it it was it was good. <clears throat> it was good. I was. Uh, um, I, I'd like to thank the Furcog. They, they did a nice job. Uh, Carolyn and the uh, Board of Health of Deerfield, Carolyn Ness, uh, Trevor, Dave Wolfram. Um, there's a lot of people. And, and for every, every hour that you see people doing something, there's about 40 hours behind the uh, scene right. um, getting things all organized. So I, I just, it was amazing. I also like to just let Scott and uh, uh, David know our, our town minister Jeff Kravitz is uh, now a member of the MRC and Jeff was there as a volunteer on Friday also. I thought that was an outstanding thing, nice. Jeffrey. Thank you very much. We, it was we appreciate it. My yeah. pleasure. And, and, he, and, he had, and he was assigned, I think, the worst job. And he, uh, 
he, he handled it like a trooper. Nice job, Joe. There Did you he go. give out the stickers? <laughs> no, best <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah. You know what the problem was, Scott? And I and I had said so this is Carolyn, and Carolyn kind of laughed at me when I told her. I said, you know, we should be we should have lollipops. And she said, There you lollipops. go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd be a surprise, but after people get there, they're such in a great, they're great, great mood. They just want lollipops. There you go. Next time I'm gonna bring lollipops. That's well, they're in the brewery. If they were giving out samples afterwards for you, get a shot, get a sample. That would really oh, don't get say, folks don't in there. Say, don't say that. They could get all kinds of volunteers. Back. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't want to share that much. Yeah. They didn't put you on Sharp's disposal duty, did they, Jeff? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. Well, that, thanks to everybody who volunteered. That's uh, greatly appreciated. And like you said, Tom, it kind of gets people out and among more people than they've probably been with for a while. So. Oh. A long That's time. awesome. <clears throat> That's great. <clears throat> All right. Anybody have any other COVID updates? All right. <clears throat> so our next topic is uh, tied to the budget. This is pretty much our small amount of budget so, talk this week. So, we so David, if I could write real, real yes. quick about COVID, yeah. up, ju just so people know, there's going to be another, there's going to be another, uh, clinic run by the FERCOG. Every week they're up in uh, Greenfield. So if you can, you can sign, try to sign up for on Greenfield's uh, website. Uh, and the next FERCOG uh, besides Greenfield is going to be March 8th and 9th uh, up in Burnison. So those are areas that you can try to sign up as well besides UMass. And I would just tell you and, and is just, I'd recommend that you talk to CVS uh, the one up in Greenfield is uh, dispensing shots. UMass, uh, Bay State Health. Uh, if you haven't, if you haven't been able to make an appointment yet, keep calling. And and if worse comes to worse, you call the uh, South County Senior Center and ask them to put you on the uh, the waiting list. Because next time we have the uh, distribution, we do have a wait list, and we started we started going through that wait list the uh, the other day. So, well, that's great. All right, good info. Thanks, Tom. <clears throat> All right, so we've got our discussion of potential borrowing authorization for capital expenses that we talked about last time around, and uh, probably a couple of other budget-related things. <clears throat> so, Mr. Chair, if I could, yeah, until until we have a, a solid, and this is a segue, a solid sense as to our available revenues for the operating budget. You know, the discussion here is still conceptual. I think it still has a great deal of value, but there's not really a way we can put a number um, into the total discussion without knowing our levy capacity. Right. Right. Kind of borrow, borrowing, you could do a debt off, you could do a debt exclusion that require a ballot question. Um, and that may be a path forward in the near future uh, for a special possibly, but we really, my feeling is that the, the need, the tension between the need to continue funding the capital work at the level that's, re that it, that it's consuming, right? Yep. Um, we have to find the mechanism to pay for it on that scale. So until we have a census to the revenue numbers for the current budget year, I don't see how we can go forward without asking the treasury collector to, you know, go out and look for, for bonding. Jeff's already done that budgeting element of it as well. So, right. And I want to keep, I'd, I'd like to keep it on the forefront of the discussion, but, you know, adding, adding a value uh, to uh, the tax base uh, when after last week's presentation from our, our education uh, frontier and Sunderland elementary, you know, that, that could take all the oxygen out of all the revenues and still leave us short. Yes. Yep. And I know we haven't got final numbers, but there was enough knowledge there to right. put us on, on warning in that respect. So on that subject, if I could, one more piece. Yeah. Last week when we were in that discussion, I was working off of an, um, that I was working off a spreadsheet that was not the final version. And I misstated the Sunderland Elementary ask last year. So I want to, I want to clarify that so that my number, the 135,000 was indeed off. And uh, I, I reached out to Peter uh, over the course of the week 
and uh, clarified that with him on uh, electronically. But I think it's important to bear in mind that that said, 2019, 2020 budget cycle, the town passed a $200,000 override straight to education. And the number that we're having here uh, is right within the context of, right within the framework of what I had said last week. We can't have half a million, 600 to $600,000 over the course of, of every three years and still expect to fund the other elements of the town without some measure of override. Right. <clears throat> There's only so much. Math so much. doesn't work. That's right. <clears throat> and we've, we've been there before. So we, right. we know what So with respect like. to the capital piece, you know, the, if you look at even, even the Roy Brown study, and you look at what the capital planning committee sees on an, any given year basis, not necessarily rolling equipment. We, yeah. we take rolling equipment at you know, five-year notes and, and buy it down. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, but if you look at these other tasks, you look at the building survey, uh, the rim board replacement program at the elementary school over a three-year period or a four-year period. You look at the repointing that we're proposing for the uh, Gray's Memorial Library way. this year. You look said. at the, Sir, let's walk through the numbers and show what she's talking. Oh, well, could uh, somebody make mute there, please? Thanks. Sorry, that was me going off a little too loudly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you if you look at the HPAC requests uh, for uh, automation uh, upgrade at the public safety complex, you look at the annual pieces and soon to be the 20 year old new library. All right. Uh, looking at how their HVAC failure rate has managed. They've managed it well over the life cycle of that equipment. There may be some wholesale work that comes on in that system. Those aspects are really, really important. We've been biting them off since the Roy Brown report was put forward, uh, you know, less than $100,000 at a time. $15,000 project here, $18,000 project there. Uh, what is it, Jeff? Fifty-five for repointing at Graves this year. That's closer to seventy. Closer money. to seventy through CPA money. So again, we got some historical work, but that was called out, and that's only one to keep the building, uh, keeping the water out of it. Right. That's all, that's all we're doing is keeping the water out of it. So as you look at the big numbers over a decade-long borrowing, and maybe uh, a decade is is short. I'm not sure. Uh, that's where the treasurer collector and uh, the discussion with the townspeople about what a 10 year plan for building looks like building a maintenance looks like uh, and we borrow now and pay incrementally. Yeah, uh, is that you're right I mean that as as great as it is that we got that override pass for the for some capital it's it's only a small percentage of what's actually you know needed based on just to keep the buildings from crumbling into disrepair. Right, and I think there's an important dialogue to be had in there, not to go off too far in the capital discussion. You know, our rolling stock is replaced pretty, our rolling stock isn't that old, right? Yeah. Our rolling stock we take care of, but even that takes the oxygen out of the capital plan. You know, a, a $300,000, and I'm, I'm making a number up here, but $300,000 fully outfitted twin axle that's on the on the capital budget for two years from now takes all the oxygen out. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't fix any windows, right? There's $350,000 worth of windows in the south side of the elementary school that are original equipment. Yeah. And then to say nothing of the issues that we've had with the, um, I'll just say the legacy of the safety complex and the issues Correct. we've had there. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> poor, de poor design, poor construction. We keep fixing it. Yep. It was one of those penny wise pound foolish things in the, in, right. in the long run. Yep. So <clears throat> those, I'd like to, I'd like to bring the conversation, keep the conversation at the forefront so that the public is aware that this is a need and it's a strategic step in securing your operating budget expenses, yep. right? The reason we've broken this out for the last decade plus is that it gives relief to the use of free cash. It gives relief to the need for uh, short-term borrowing or uh, one-time funding mechanisms. It's a programmatic approach. And I think that has, 
the most important aspect of the discussion. That is the most important aspect of the discussion. I would agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. And with capital, you know, you really have to be looking at like five, 10 and even longer or term more plans. Term. Exactly. Right. Cause yep. it's a long-term strategic thing. Right. So anyway, until we yeah. can get our revenues, our revenue kind of piece, we, we would not know where part A and part B fit at this point. Right. But I don't want to lose momentum in the dialogue. No, that's true. You're right. So we'll give everybody a bit of a break from the massive budget discussions this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll we be can back. certainly go there. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But keep in mind, we'll be back next week. Right. <clears throat> I'm sure. So no, on, on that season. subject, if I could, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, in, in the discussion with uh, Peter about the, in the presentation last year, oh, excuse me, geez, I wish it was last year, Yeah. last week. Uh, about how, quote, it's Sunderland's turn this year that our DESEC formula yep. you know, got, got uh, our, in, this is, happens to be our year of our increase, which I, I always find irritating. Uh, Peter had mentioned, and, and it was simply in passing in his, in, his, in, his, um, in his correspondence, I sure hope that the development um, in the asset that the development is to the total town, meaning Route 116 North, um, isn't a factor in the DESC's, DESCC's formulation for Sunderland's ability to pay. Oh. And so the percentage of our ability to pay uh, moves formulaically through the state without any help, without any input or without any discussion uh, by the town toward funding the regional school budget. And I've asked Jeff to reach out to DLS about this okay. and see if that's, if, if that's <clears throat> part of the mix. Yeah, that would be good to know. That'd be an interesting aspect of it. <clears throat> Especially given the lack of control we have over that portion. Well, I want to remind people, it was only, it was only a mere 15 odd years ago, 14 odd years ago, that the DHCD, when the 40B came forward, uh, said that, quote, no increase in operating costs are allowed to be factored into the decision. Mm. Now, that's not our decision. That's, that's right. their decision. That will be interesting. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm done. Thank you. That's okay. It's important discussion. You're right. We have to keep going, even though. It's too, it's too deep in the weeds. That ends up being the problem. Yeah. Unfortunately, you have to get into the weeds to deal with this stuff. Right. I'll give Jeff a second to get back there because it's <laughs> our it's our occasional jump up and reactivate the lights thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Um, any other discussions around that topic at all? Anybody have anything? All set, baby. All right. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, you know. It it's interesting too to keep an eye on what's happening in Amherst because they're having a, a similar discussion. They have four major capital projects that they're trying to fund, yeah. and basically any way you cut it, it's going to eat into their operating budget. They're looking at dedicating more of the total revenues to to capital expenses. Slightly different because they're talking about major renovations, but it you know it, it's an example of of how capital can affect operating budget. And, Right, and the methods they use to, to tackle those problems and everything, right? Yeah, well, for years, for years, we, we'd scratch away 100,000, 150,000 at, 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 you know, at the very most, and that would incorporate all the total, the total ask. At least now there's a program, there's a structure around it. So we have a window of opportunity with rates the way they are, and the fact that two buildings have come, are coming off the tax rate this year, the exempt tax rate, the trouble with exempt tax rate and your actual levy capacity is they're separate and apart, right? So we could have all of all of our levy capacity used up by, uh, I'll pick on the waste treatment plant, right? I'll pick on any department, insert name here. And it leaves you no room to do something else without either an exemption or an override. And with capital, I'm, I'm, I'm personally of the mindset the capital should be by exemption uh, or inside of the 
uh, levy capacity. It should not be an override specific because it's a it's program. You should be able to run run that debt down, that it's, that asset as, as life is extended, and the impact on the tax rate should be stable. It shouldn't be cyclical. Right, because otherwise you'd be all you just cause all sorts of havoc with the budget. You know, with, with that. Yep. That's right. That was an excellent point. <clears throat> well, there'll be, stay tuned, folks. There'll be a lot more to discuss on the budget topic. So, and I know um, we've got some upcoming, there'll be upcoming actual budget hearings for Frontier and uh, the elementary school. So, sixth, right? I think so, yeah. Um, I actually, P Peter's ninth. on. Is it the ninth? I think so. Yes, it is, Dave. Okay. okay. All right. So, folks may want to stay tuned, maybe even actually go to those. So, we'll be good. Oh, on Zoom, anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, and then we've got our select board update section of the evening tonight. I'll just kind of work my way down. How about uh, I'll see Tom first tonight. So I'll set, yeah, Dave. I'll set. Scott? I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. And I'm actually, I'm all set tonight, too. So, um, so with that, we'll turn it over to Jeff. All right. Fresh off the uh, volunteer. And I'll just, I'll start by echoing what Tom said. It was really uh, fulfilling to do to do that work and see how happy people were, and and it was nice to see people <laughs> in general. Yeah, um, that's good. Which was great. So I encourage anybody else to to volunteer and sign up for the medical reserve corps. It's really easy. Two hours of training. Um, you get a nice card. Um, a couple updates. I don't think I had any last week, so. Uh, a few. One, um, the closing for 120 North Main Street was scheduled for today. Uh, I was getting emails back and forth after five o'clock. Um, so I'm assuming that it didn't actually happen today, but they're still planning on doing it this week. Okay. Um, so I will certainly let you know as soon as everything's been fully executed and, and transferred. Oh, great. Um, Thanks. I filed our first quarterly report for our park grant. Um, we are hopefully uh, contracting with a designer for the restrooms and then moving into sort of the design and, and permitting phase for everything. We expect to get some uh, drawings for the walkway down the um, boat ramp this week as well. So I'll, I'll pass those along. Great. Um, we just got the contract for the non-participating work for North Main Street, um, which just to remind people who may be watching, uh, due to budget reasons, MassDOT said you have to reduce the scope. So there was some paving on the north end of North Main and then a storm drain replacement um, from Warner Drive to School Street that had to be cut from the MassDOT project um, that we thought was really important. And so the town is paying for that, that work um, out of chapter 90 funds um, for this year. And, and it's gonna be done by the same contractor. So it's all part of the project. So we don't need to worry about the coordination of That's that. Um, and speaking of School Street, I'm also working, I know we have the, the designs for School Street. Uh, the state launched a new one-stop grant application uh, pro, uh, website, I guess, web page, um, and they're taking expressions of interest. And so I was gonna, wanted to certainly talk to you guys about your ideas, but some of the, pro basically it's, what do you wanna do in town? Um, it includes, so it includes mass works, um, infrastructure funding, some planning grants. So I was thinking about School Street and, um, also the village center visioning that, that the village yeah. center committee has been talking about. But if you have other ideas, I think you can, you know, it's an expression of interest. So you can throw the, the kitchen sink in there um, as far as projects. And then when we actually get down to the application, we can narrow it. So if there are other suggestions, um, please so, don't hesitate Jeff, to let those, me know. Those uh, that you've mentioned are spot on. We've got some preliminary design work already on school street. I would, if it's if it's that kind of you know one-stop shop for grant rounds under public works, I would um, I would uh, suggest looking at uh, 
uh, walkability of plum tree. Yes, I agree. Yep. That would be great. Is that something we've discussed if you, a number you of times? you really wanted to swing for the fence under that walkability of plum tree, you could also take the tie and bond uh, study for the waste treatment system expansion. Yep, the extension. Okay. Is, you know, the best thing to do is to pave a big, beautiful section of road or add sidewalks, and then in the following year, come back and dig it all up. Yeah, exactly. That's what we do in Massachusetts, <laughs> Scott. Exactly come on. Right. right. Yeah. Pave, it, pave it, wait two weeks, and rip it up again. Exactly right. Yep. That's great. Um, yeah, and I, my understanding from the state is that they wanted us to, to say everything we're thinking of, and they'll help us with narrowing it down to what they think we, we would actually have potential to be funded for. Sure. So. Well, that integration from silver through South Silver through Plum Tree, all that walkability is, it's been a, a slow simmer for over a decade. Decades. Yeah. Oh yeah, and anybody who drives down there, I mean, just look at right. the people you pass, walking, walking dogs. Right. Nope. Uh, and then the last thing I just wanted to mention is um, we had some interviews for a uh, new highway laborer um, and are likely to come with a, a, the superintendent's recommendation next week to you for appointment. Um, and we're also going to be interviewing this week for the Board of Assessors Administrative Assistant position. Oh, that, well, that's that good. Vacated by Teresa. So. Oh. And to kind of your point about the North Main Street project, I mean, before you know it, that's going to be starting up. So because we're already it's at March 1st. Already, already begun. Utility trucks yeah. and surveyors have been out there. Yeah. Yep. The tree Doing, folks have been out last couple of days. Yep. yep. Identifying stuff. So Doing all that preliminary work. So. Oh, and sorry. I, uh, yeah. Another no, thing that with um, complete streets is likely going to be starting in about two weeks on nice. south silver and so i'm just waiting for the contact information from the contractors that are working on it and then we're going to put a letter out to them i told them to give me a couple weeks notice also when they're moving to south maine so that we can notify those residents when it's about to start but just um letting them know that the work is starting to happen about how long it's going to take and who to get in touch with if they have questions or concerns. All right. Excellent. That's right. I forgot about that. That's great. All right. Um, do we have any public comment? We've kind of reached the public comment section of our agenda tonight. I don't know if we've got anything. Yes. There we go. Did you have something, Scott? Or I was just going to remind people that the caucus last Saturday was canceled, oh, and that it's this. Oh, I forgot about that. Postponed. Oh, sorry, not not yep. canceled. Right. Postponed. Rescheduled. Yep. Rescheduled to this Saturday, same location, same time. So people nice. who are interested in both participating and or running for office, you know, please come down to the town office building, 10 a.m. Keep our fingers crossed for better weather this weekend. It's March. You never know. Yeah, that's right. 65 one day and slushy and snowy the next. Right. The Monday of months is here. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Um, all right. So with that, I think we've exhausted our agenda this evening. This is a rare, quick moment. So. We'll take it. Exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, we can keep going unless somebody wants to, you know, have yeah. a motion to adjourn. Motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I, we're hey, going through a tunnel. <laughs> hey, hey, Donald. Donald. Stop. Yeah. Second. Uh, all right. All those in favor of adjourning. Aye. 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 All right. Then our next meeting will be next week at the same time, the 8th of March. Thanks for Thank uh, you, joining, everyone. folks. We'll see you next week.